as you know that this playlist is all about the retinoscopy every single concepts regarding the retinoscopy or the cycloplegic refraction we have discussed different parts of retinoscopy we have discussed different drugs which are used the anticholinergic drugs which are used in retinoscopy or cycloplegic refraction we have discussed the importance of working distance while performing the retinoscopy or cycloplegic refraction and now this video is about the red reflex the reflex in the pupil of the patient in this video we will discuss every single concept regarding the red reflex we have different questions in my whiteboard uh, the first question is what is actually the red reflex in retinoscopy we will find the answer next question is the difference between the red reflex and ret reflex this is about red the red reflex and ret ret reflex what is the difference between both of these so the next question is that why retinoscopic reflex is red why we find red reflex inside the pupil of the patient what will happen if we find an abnormal red reflex right so next is why my pupil is red in pictures sometimes uh, when we are capturing the photographs or pictures our pupil show a red reflex right why why that condition is happening so the next question is that why or what is the difference between a streak of the retinoscope and reflex of the retinoscope and the next question is that what is the difference between with and against movement of the retinoscopy and the last one is which is very very important and that is that the width speed and brilliance of the red reflex so now we will cover all these questions we will find the logical answers of all these questions in my whiteboard so now let's discuss about the answers of these questions and very first question is we will discuss that what is actually the difference between a streak and a reflex you know that this is a handheld instrument which is called the retinoscope and the procedure is called the retinoscopy right so when i on when i switch this retinoscope on the light will come out of this retinoscope the light which will we throw at the patient's face or you can say the light which we throw at the patient's eye or more precisely the light which is throwing on the patient's pupil that light is called the retinoscopic streak right the light on the face which is coming out of this retinoscope or the light which is coming out of this retinoscope which is throwing on the patient's pupil that light is called the streak of the retinoscope right and now what is actually the reflex you know that we are throwing a streak at the patient's pupil and that streak will hit the cornea right which has 43 dioptric power and then after the cornea it will pass through a liquid which is called the aqueous humor and then after the aqueous humor it will cross the crystalline lens which has 15 dioptric power right which is a biconvex structure and then after the crystalline lens the light or the streak will cross the gel like structures which is called the vitreous body or the vitreous humor and ultimately it will hit the most sensitive part of the eyeball which is called the retina right now from the retina that streak will reflect back and that reflection of the streak which we can see in the pupil that reflects or that light which is reflecting back in the pupil that light is called the reflex so the streak was the light which is going towards the patient's face or patient's eye or patient's pupil that that light is called the streak and when the streak is hitting the corn hitting the retina and coming back and reflecting back and the light which is reflecting back and we are observing from the pupil of the patient that reflecting back light is called the reflex of the patient so this is a major difference between a streak of the retinoscope and reflex of the retinoscope and now the next question is that what is actually the red reflex in the retinoscopy we have discussed about the reflex and now what is a red reflex in retinoscopy because the reflex which is reflecting back from the retina is red in color so that's why we call this the red reflex right and now 
the next question is that what is the difference between red and ret reflex it's red and ret r e d and r e t right so actually both of these term terminologies are the same right actually we are using the retinoscope so the reflex would be ret reflex right the reflex which is producing through the retinoscope so that's why it is called the ret reflex and the color of that reflex is red so we can say that is red reflex as well so now we will discuss that why the reflex or you can say the retinoscopic reflex is red in color as we know that the cornea is a transparent structure as you know that behind the cor cornea there is aqueous humor which is a transparent structure and then behind the aqueous humor behind the pupil you can say there is a biconvex structure which is called the crystalline lens is a transparent structures and after the crystalline lens a gel like structures vitreous humor is a transparent structures now what is what about the retina some author says that retina is precisely a transparent structures and some author says the retina is a semi transparent why it is semi transparent why it is called semi transparent you know that there are 10 layers of retina and the very first layer is called the pigmentary retina or retinal pigmented epithelium so that's why rest of the layers are transparent you can say but one layer is pigmentary layer right so that's why it is also called semi transparent but some author says the retina is totally a transparent layer so conflict is there the first structure is retina which is a transparent structures almost transparent structures and behind the retina there is a choroidal bed right and you know that the characteristics of the choroid that choroid has different pigments like melanin and the choroid has a freely pattern of blood vessels you know that the choroidal capillaries in the choroid are leaky blood vessels there is a difference between the choroidal blood vessels and retinal blood vessels choroidal blood vessels are leaky and rather than if you talk about the uh, retinal blood vessels the retinal blood vessels are not leaky they are not fenestrated right so retina and behind the retina there is choroidal choroidal bedding right so actually when we throw streak in the patient's eye and that streak will hit the retina and it will reflect back so that color of the reflex was red so that red color was of the choroidal blood vessels not the retina so that's why the reflex which we are observing in the patient's pupil is red due to the choroid not due to the retina now the next question is that why sometimes while capturing the photos our pupil will get red the us the answer of this question is the same you know that when light from the camera will go inside the pupil and that light will hit the retina and that that light will come back reflect back and that light will show a red reflex due to the choroidal blood vessels due to the choroidal pigmentations because the color of the choroid is red so that's why the that red color in the pupil is of the color of the choroid and now the next is that what is the difference between with and against movements while we are performing the retinoscope or the retinoscopy you know that we have we have make a difference we have made a difference between streak and the red reflex right so now we will discuss about the with movement and against movement so what is actually the with movement when we throw a streak in the patient's pupil so actually with movement and against movement is actually the comparison of a streak with the reflex you know that if i put a streak in the patient's pupil and i am moving that streak in the left side and the reflex in the pupil is moving in the same direction in the left side both are moving in the same direction i move the streak in the left side and reflex in the pupil is moving in the same side then that condition is called the with movement because both the reflex and the streak are moving in the same direction this is called with movement and if if i move the streak if i move the retinoscope in the left side so if i move retinoscope in the left side the streak will also move in the left side 
so after moving of the streak in the left side if the reflex of the patient is moving in the opposite direction in the right side right that condition is called the against movement so suppose this is my streak and this is reflex if i moving the streak in the left side and reflex is moving in the same side both are moving in the same side this is called the with movement and if this is streak and if i moving the streak in the right side right and reflex is moving in the opposite side so this condition is called the against movement so now we will discuss about some important points of the retinoscopy and those are the width of the reflex the brilliance of the reflex and speed of the reflex and first of all we will discuss about the width of the red reflex and these are important points you have to keep it in mind so width you have to keep it in mind that if the width of the reflex in the pupil is greater then it indicates that the refractive error of the patient is not very high right and if the width of the pupil is narrow then it means the refractive error of the patient is high so that was about the width of the reflex right and now the speed of the reflex right we have discussed about the width and against movements in the patient's pupil right and now if the speed of the reflex right if you are moving streak briskly and reflex is moving in the same speed then this condition indicates that the refractive error of the patient is not very high the refractive error of the patient is less is low if the speed of the reflex is high right and if the speed of the reflex is not very high the speed of the, of the reflex is low then it indicates that the refractive error of the patient is high if you are moving streak and reflex moving slowly streak is moving in the briskly right and reflex is moving slowly the reflex is not that speedy right so that condition indicates that the refractive error of the patient is high right and if you are moving the streak and reflex moving in the same speed the reflex is speedy so it means that the refractive error of the patient is low right and now the final thing is about the brilliance the brightness of the reflex if you observe in the pupil that reflex is brighter shiny right so the refractive error of the patient in this condition if the reflex is shiny if the reflex is brilliant if the reflex is brighter so it means it indicates that the refractive error of the patient is not very high the refractive error of the patient is low and if the brilliance of the reflex the brightness of the reflex is low is dull then it indicates that the refractive error of the patient is high and now when our reflex would be abnormal right in in which conditions our reflex would be abnormal and what is actually the abnormal pupillary reflex or retinoscopic reflex or red reflex right so now if mucus is in excess in the tear film then our reflex would be abnormal right if mucus is in excess uh form in the you know that the tear film is a combination of three things the mucus which is coming from the goblet cells of conjunctiva the water which is coming from the lacrimal gland and the third thing is the oily lipid layer which is coming from the meibomian gland in the eyelid right so tear film is actually the combination of these three components right and if the tear film has excess of the mucus from the goblet cells of conjunctiva then our reflex would be abnormal right and if there is any uh, abnormalities or you can say impurities in the uh, you can say aqueous humor like we have hypopion pus in the anterior chamber or blood in the anterior chamber like we have uh, hyphema the blood in the anterior chamber then our reflex would be abnormal right and if we have cataract then no reflex would be there or reflex would be totally abnormal right and if we have vitreous hemorrhages we have blood in the vitreous 
in the gel like structure then our our reflex would be totally abnormal right and if we have iris abnormalities like we have iris iris coloboma right then the it will affect the aperture of the pupil and the reflex would be abnormal right if we have chorioretinal colobomas then our reflex would be abnormal so in all these conditions our reflex would be abnormal and uh, you know about the seizure reflex cratoconus right if someone has the cratoconus a cone like cornea right so in that condition the reflex would be seizure like we will make a detailed video on this topic so in all these conditions our reflex would be abnormal hope this is clear and in the upcoming videos we will discuss about the straddling in the retinoscopy skewing in the retinoscopy sweeping in the retinoscopy a lot of things are there regarding the retinoscopy we'll see you in the next videos